Hello YouTube. Today I'm coming to you from the cockpit of an F-15C uh, from Digital Combat Series, or DCS. And uh, I thought I would show, uh, in particular, Star Citizen users what should be expected from a key binding screen and why those of us who are avid flight simmers are kind of uh, complaining about the lack thereof in Star Citizen. Now while you can use uh, software provided by uh, manufacturers such as CH Control Manager or Target from Thrustmaster, it's really ideal to have this in the game because not all joysticks can use uh, those software. As an example, the Thrustmaster T-Flight X HOTAS cannot use Target. Therefore, it's important to have those uh, features available from within the game, and DCS does it perhaps the best. Now, I have all of my devices uh, plugged in and through DirectX mode, they're being detected um, by DirectX through Direct Input. I am not running CH Control Manager, I am not running Target. So this is also a fresh clean install, so I've not gone through and customized anything. I just wanted to show you the basics. So let's go to adjust controls. Automatically here you see keyboard, MFD2, my fighter stick, the other MFD, my pro throttle, pro pedal, track IR, and mouse. All of these devices are detected by the game, and it tells me right there which device is what. So I know here that if I say I go to axis commands, and I'm going to adjust the rudder with the uh, Joy RZ, that I'm adjusting it for this device. Let's take a look here at uh, the CH flight stick Joy Y. I have the option here that I can tune the axis. I can set a dead zone. I can adjust the curvature, the response curve. I can in fact get very detailed with that rever uh, response curve. Now you would never use something like this in the real world. But just to go to show you the insane amount of flexibility that I have from an in game. Now of course I can also do this in um, uh, CH Control Manager. But there's a couple of little problems with that. Anytime that I'm going to do it with a CH control manager, I have to alt tab from the game, exit out from the game, tweak something, go back into the game, you know, load the profile, relaunch the game. Uh, and that gets to be a pain in the ass. Here, I can do it from within the game. Now, I would combine all of these joystick devices for CH into a single device with eight axes um, so that I have a little bit better control because. The way it is right now, it does a few goofy things having this many devices. In fact, it sees uh, basically each stick as being independently, or the throttle. I can use the mini stick to fly just as I could the, the um, fighter stick. So for pitch and yaw, I can use the little mini stick to do the same thing, but uh, not ideal. But this is the level of detail and the level of sophistication that flight simmers have grown accustomed to with games like DCS and um, uh, X-Plane, uh, Falcon BMS. We expect to have this level of finite control from within the game, the ability to calibrate things from within the game. Uh, and this is not something that's been new. I mean, we used to have to do this back in the days of DOS. It's something that we've grown up and grown accustomed to. and. Uh, you know, you'll see it on consoles as well, the ability to adjust sensitivities for mice input as well as gamepad controllers for consoles or first-person shooters um, uh, when it comes to mouse and keyboard. But the other reason why we need to have this in the game is maybe DCS is at the extreme side of this. But look at how many buttons there are, how many functions there are to bind. It is nearly impossible, now you can do a printout and things like that, but it's nearly impossible to remember all of these commands when you're trying to set something up in a, in a control software like CH Control Manager. Now, Star Citizen as of yet is nowhere near this level of sophistication and uh, level of detail. Nor do I ever really expect it to be. But if I go look at the uh, amount of control binds that there are in, say, uh, Free Space 2 Open, in particular Diaspora, there's several pages of menus there. Um, you know, this is for the F-15 now. They separate things out by game, uh, you know, so you can do different different modes for different games. 
Uh, and that's fine, for, or for different aircraft, I should say. But also, look at how I can get to things. Here's all my stuff for uh, autopilot settings. Communications. Countermeasures. Debug. <laughs> Flight controls. You know, you can fly with keyboard and mouse here. I don't recommend it. General gameplay. The kneeboard. Labels. Simplifications. Systems. You know, weapons, etc. But I thought I would just show kind of the uh, Star Citizen community whenever I talk about the needs to have key binding, why I find it so important, and what it is many of us that come from the Simmer community expect in terms of quality. Uh, because this has everything here that you would, you know, I could do just about anything I needed to do from here without needing a CH control manager. Uh, else peripherals then do start to make a difference because there are things that I can do in CH control manager with CH gear that a SATEC user will never be able to do with an X-52. And that's just the nature of the difference of the peripherals. Um, if you do, if you have it set up this well, then a guy with a T-Flight X HOTAS has the same levels of customization as somebody flying with a Warthog and using Target. So it does balance those things out uh, to a much greater degree. Well, that's really all that I have here today, but I just thought I would uh, share this with the greater community. Um, again, if you like the videos, please like, su uh, subscribe, share, and um, pretty much it for this video. Thanks for bearing with me, and... Uh, See you in the future.